Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Reading Quest once again. So today the books I'm going to talk about uh, are very special in a sense that I've been of late I've been getting a lot of uh, questions as to from the newcomers from the from the beginners as to what to read exactly and where to start from because there is so much so much of of books to be read that sometimes uh, you know, we, we we end up being overwhelmed with them, and and you know, mostly when it comes to the younger generation and, and those who are not exposed to reading properly, you know, sometimes it feels we are surrounded by so much of nonsense that we always try to find a sense in all those nonsense, and that is very dangerous. So, how to make sense of reading exactly? Where to start from reading? Say, for instance, even if you're reading uh, one William Shakespeare and one Thomas Hardy, and then one Tagore, and then one Peter Handke from our time, and then again going back to uh, you know reading some Plato, and then again coming back to reading some Nietzsche, and reading one paper on, on Immanuel Kant, and then going back to post-war writers, you know, doesn't make much sense. Right, because because even if you, you, you are choosing your dishes like an a la carte in a restaurant, okay, but it is exactly how the larger picture uh, is, is framed and if you cannot put the things in perspective, okay, if you cannot think, uh, see how a particular work of art, how a particular book is placed in the larger confines of its age and the cultural and social milieu in which it is written, then I think probably the work is not done. Okay, and eventually reading you in bits and pieces won't take you anywhere. So here, this video is one-stop solution. I'll say, uh, uh, you know, for for those who who want to embark upon a long, long journey of reading. So here we go, without wasting your time. I I hope all of you must have heard of Will Durant, of course, of his book The Story of Philosophy. But here I'm talking not of the story of philosophy first. Here I'm talking of another writing of his that is Heroes of History by Will Durant. Heroes of history. And all these books I'm suggesting will help you to develop a common perspective, to understand things in a common background, in some kind of thematic similarity interconnected with each other. Okay, so Heroes of History talks about individuals who have shaped the human history, uh, you know, the history of mankind, why the world is as it is today okay starting from the from the dawn of civilization till 21st century so the book talks about uh, 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 starts with what is civilization and it goes back to confucius and then in india it talks from buddha to gandhi the pyramid the philosophy and poetry of old testament then the golden age of athens then plato to alexander roman republic roman revolution and then till the time of Shakespeare and Bacon. So a very interesting read, I guess, and a very lucid read. I think all of you must, must go for it. Heroes of History. And of course, I'm going to put these books in the description section as well. So don't worry at all. Then the very next book that I think all of you must go for is 10 Theories of Human Nature. Okay, 10 Theories of Human Nature uh, encourages readers to think critically for themselves. Okay, and it Compare and contrast various theories uh, uh, or, or talks about individual or, or thinkers who have theorized human nature. For example, Confucius, for example, Plato, for example, Buddha, for example, Jesus Christ, for example, Karl Marx, for example, Sigmund Freud. While Karl Marx places a lot of emphasis on the economic uh, aspect of history, Sigmund Freud places a lot of emphasis on the sexual aspect of history, sexual repression. Okay, whereas Buddha places an interest on, on, on suffering. So in each way, these individuals have theorized human nature. So if you want to read some of the greatest theories of human nature, this book is for you. Okay, and it, let me tell you, it should be an ideal introductory course for anyone who is interested in reading history, for anyone who is interested in reading philosophy, religious studies, psychology, and the intellectual history of mankind in general okay so please go for it then coming to one of the most popular one of the most well read and one of the most least understood book uh, of course one of the most suggested one is the story of philosophy by will durant okay the intensity of book is such that it requires a, a genius of the highest order to write philosophy in terms of poetic language and it took 11 years to, to write this book 
Will Duran took 11 years to write this book. So you can understand the intensity here. For those who are intimidated by the word philosophy, read it as a poetic journey, read it as, you know, the, the autobiographical study of an individual, the study of the ideas of their time, okay, and how these ideas are correlated and how these ideas uh, can be seen uh, in successive placement with each other. So please go for this one. Then of course, I mean, I think Rachel needs no introduction, a man who was a professional mathematician at Trinity College, Cambridge, who wrote volumes of books on philosophy, most infamously said that marriage is a legalized prostitution, had his books burnt, uh, which got him expelled from the university and for which he was awarded a Nobel in literature in the, 19, in the year 1954. So that requires a genius of the highest order. Okay, so if again the word philosophy intimidates you, please hold on. This book has to be read in order for how English is to be written, if not for anything else. This book has to be read how you can broach an argument, how you can demolish an argument, how you can construct an argument, how you can take sides still appearing neutral, okay, how you can demolish the argument of other, how you can strengthen an argument, how you can point towards the apparent flaw in the argument with utmost rationality. Okay, so whatever Rachel speaks, he speaks like a cold-blooded logician. No wonder he was, a, he was a logician, he was a mathematician. And whatever he says, he says with a profound rationale for having him said so. So please, please go for this. This is an indispensable read. Okay, I, and I hope all of you must enjoy it. After this, Okay, now all of you must also know exactly some of the writers because we are so much culturally enriched by the Britishers. Okay, oh, call it colonialism or call it whatever else. So I, I believe that an outline history of English literature is something that all of you should read by W. H. Hudson. A very lucid introductory text of the various writers of their time, their important work. And this will give you a plethora, plethora of suggestions exactly where to start from, which writer to go for, which writer you should not go for. Even if you are reading Dickens, what exactly in Dickens are you supposed to read? Should you directly start with The Tale of Two Cities? Should you start with Oliver Twist? Why you should not start with Tale of Two Cities? Why you should start with Great Expectations or Oliver Twist? Why you should read Bleak House? Why you should not read David Copperfield right at the beginning? So all these questions will be self-answered without taking the help of a teacher. So please go for this one. A very lucid, uh, lucidly written book, I'd say. Well, then please go for this one again by the same writer. The Study of Literature by... William Henry Hudson, W. H. Hudson. Again, this book talks about how to make sense of whatever we are reading, especially insofar as literature is concerned, how to make sense of novel. What exactly are the things that we are supposed to look into while reading a novel, look into while reading a poem, how to approach uh, a drama. Okay, what exactly uh, makes the work of art so great okay why a certain work is remembered throughout the ages why certain works are forgotten what are the parameters on which we are supposed to measure we are supposed to analyze such thing mind it i'm not forcing you into critical theory but it is just the very basic minimum required to talk about and to make sense of the 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 greatest literature that we are about to read or that we will be in the process of due course of time reading so please go for this the study of literature by w h Hudson. Okay. Now one book which uh, uh, I think would be new to all of you will be Why Read the Classics by Italo Calvino. So it starts with the, the elegant defense of classic. What are classics? So classics are something as, as, as uh, Italo Calvino says that it is something that everyone, everyone says they are rereading part and they are not reading. Classics are something uh, that have a universal significance and a permanent relevance to use two phrases used by Italo Calvino. So the book starts with the defense of literature, the defense of classics, why must we read classics, what are classics and then it talks about it. This book consists of 36 essays including thoughts on figures like Homer, 
Hemingway, Borges, Tolstoy, Mark Twain, Thomas Hardy, okay, uh, Gustav Flaubert, uh, 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 Balzac. Okay, so this book will again give you an idea of some of the greatest work of art that have been produced in uh, the history of humanity. Uh, and, and that period of history which is more close to ours than it was close to Shakespeare and before. So this book talks about some of the work of art that is our age, more close to our times. So please, please go for this one as well. Now at the end, exactly because these days we have been talking about a lot of history, 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 that we need to have a historical sense. But what exactly is history is being discussed by E. H. Carr in his, in his classic introduction to the theory of history, how to make sense of history. Okay, why some facts are historical whereas some facts are not historical. Okay, uh, uh, you know, what is a subtle definition of history? So this lively, scholarly and challenging book, and of course a very lucid one, I'm not throwing you into a very uh, eurydid reading. Okay, so this book is of uh, on an indispensable interest to you, I would say. So go for all these uh, books, uh, my dear friends. Okay, and then you need not have to ask for any suggestion. Uh, these books will Will, will themselves be taking care of all the suggestions, all the questions that have been, you know, uh, coming into your mind. And I think that question will properly be answered. And I think, uh, you know, your reading quest will be diluted. Happy reading. Thank you so much.